Okay, so welcome everyone. Uh, we are here with Professor Surinder Singh. And uh, full disclosure, uh, Professor Singh and I go way back that, uh, you know, almost 10 years, I think. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, but he is the uh, founder of the Raj Academy program for the preservation and promotion of traditional Sikh music as well as the Nod Yoga Council. So uh, welcome, Professor Surinder Singh. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me on your program. So really, uh, and, and I, I always give this kind of introduction, uh, the way that these conversations came about was thinking about how we're isolated, uh, especially in, in the age of COVID. But, you know, there's always enough stuff happening in our lives that mm -hmm. we need I feel we need a faith perspective to see us through those very difficult parts of life. And so my goal was to just talk to various religious leaders and religious people and just see how, what, what about faith sustains you? Uh, Michael, the problem is not a faith. Problem is a belief and a trust. You know, if one doesn't know how to trust, uh, have not encountered trust, uh, will not uh, engage the process of a belief. Because the tradition I come in from, like what you mentioned, not yoga, uh, the sound and ability. So how to create that oneness between soul, mind and body, and of course, God. Uh, what, what tools do we have? So first, we have to have a trust in ourselves to engage with uh, a question before we even, even have a quest. I usually say this, Michael, that if you want to drive, you need to trust yourself that you can. But if you don't trust, believe me or not, that you will never uh, be able to drive. So once you trust and the process happens, that gives birth to faith. So when we go to church, to the congregation, we meet those people who are tuned in and we see the transformation in their life. Then our trust grows. Uh, but sadly, we are living in a very kind of uh, uh, a quick fix society. So we go straight to faith. Uh, where the, the process of uh, a congregation or meeting people through the society, uh, developing trust and, and reaching belief, then, you know, of course, the faith is inevitable. And all of this process, I, I feel nowadays, Michael, is missing. Therefore, humanity is going through a crisis. I think physically, we don't have much challenge uh, as, uh, social media and all of these things like, see, I'm in England and you're in the States and we're meeting and we can talk for as long as we want to. Uh, but the problem is uh, the, the mental health issue. We, you know, how we're processing, how we're seeing, how we're configuring it and our own sound, our own conversation with ourselves. So uh, that is jolting the, the face. In, in specifically our communication between ourselves is threatened. And so that will shake the trust and um, the temple of belief will crumble down. So faith is under threat. This is how I see it. Okay. Yeah. And, and you make, you, you make some really interesting analogies. You know, uh, one, one of the things you're talking about, like, you know, you have to trust yourself that you're, you can drive a car. And when you said that, the, one of the first things that occurred to me is how much we take for granted the danger of driving a car. That if mm -hmm. we, you know, if we allow our mind to wander, or let's say we were just malicious, right? The ability to do great physical harm to somebody with an automobile, Indeed. yeah, Indeed. is there. And yet, right, it's something that we do every day. We travel in, in cars every day because we trust that if we're alert and if we, you know, if we make the right decisions and we're not drunk, you know, <laughs> um, then, then we will survive. The Michael configuration is, is an issue. Education is another issue yep. um, that uh, one must be aware 
of uh, and must one must be in a sense you know what i mean i mean it's not that it's numbed under the weed or alcohol and uh, there is a question on your judgment and you are you going to be driving so what i'm saying we are living in a society uh, filled up with crashes and a lot of humanity is losing um, the time in in a physically and loved one then in courts and other cases uh, the situation is these are the same drivers who's are who are driving their spiritual cars too and over there the crashes are fatal one mm. you know we we are uh, humanity i would say lack of education especially especially when it comes to spirituality uh, we are quite deprived at the moment and humanity is suffering because of uh, that bridge has been broken okay so you know gosh, there's so much that we could talk about you, you know and we should um, talk about okay it. all right um so from from your belief or faith you know however whatever level we're we're discussing um where's the solution what do how do how do we where do we go from here see we are the solution uh, configuration is the solution the sooner you you know the, your question is that i want to go from my home to my church um, not by foot but by car or by cycle now we are the solution enabling us you know the problem is not a solution at all problem is the quest the question problem is that do we want to drive people are uh, under the influence of drug and we are talking about consciousness you know what i mean we're talking about listening to the voice of god here one cannot even communicate with his own partner so mm -hmm. the crisis on a, a social and physical ground and uh, one must i i uh, we've been told like this the, the the faith i am from or the path i am from um uh, sick is known as a seeker mm -hmm. the religious box has been taken away so for me to go to church and meditate there is um, is it's the same thing that i go to gurdwara or go to temple or go to mosque it's not the religion it's not about the path it's about the destination the the goal of oneness between my body my mind my soul and my god that how do i uh, become one or if i am one with already you know as we have been created by the creator and the creator is amongst us if if the oneness is already there how do i configure that oneness and when it comes to my pain when it comes to my suffering if when it comes to my poverty and ability and a disability how do i create a balance and and have this life mm -hmm. uh, in an amazing way so the faith that we were given by it was started 1469 by guru nanak mm -hmm. uh, based on a communication uh, so a communication it says converse with your mind and convince and make mind fall in love with the reality and and live a natural discipline life um, if you are happy your body will be healthy and if if you will look nanak uh, and and guru's conversations you will see his his analogies are family related analogies so i also uh, from learning from him i i talk to my children i say michael that look if i am looking for happiness the basically in this world in this life my happiness is my children for example mm -hmm. if they are sad i can't be happy truly mm -hmm. i can't be happy if my children they are sad and if we are the children of god mm. how can god be happy if we are suffering mm -hmm. so we need to configure our our how to be happy we need to we need to understand and we don't have a much a time 60 70 80 30 40 years we we don't know if going to have tomorrow or not but problem michael is that if we are 
if we want to be living, then we should be living a happy life. And to, for us to be happy, we need to converse with our mind because happiness is not a physical thing. Mm -hmm. You know, happiness is a mental thing. So you can be very, very healthy physically, rich and all of these things ain't gonna make you happy. Mm -hmm. What's gonna make you happy is your mental state. So we have been ignoring, you know, how much time we spend on social media, how much time, you know, uh, and, and how little time we, we, if we even go to church, uh, we sit there and sing one or two prayer and we just, you know, we just looking for this ritual to finish and we, we run out of it. Oh, most of the time, Sunday, when we go to mass and nobody's there, you know, mentally, physically, we drag our bodies and so, soul wise, we are so afraid. So Michael, if somebody who loves you great deal, it says that the person loves you so much. And then you find out the person has been afraid of you all of the life. How will you feel? So, you know, the performance from, from the fear has to be converted into love. And therefore, we must converse with the mind. Mm -hmm. So what I say is the, the art of communication between our body, between our mind and soul. So best have a little bit different definition of mind as a thought process is a little bit much more than that. But uh, we, we can talk that in detail sometime. But what I'm saying, like your creative brain and your logical brain and your physical body, your action, your motor skills. So if you can configure those, you will become a really cool driver on the road, in materialistically, in the life and also spiritually. And church was playing that role, was guiding us, you know, she was telling us how to, how to drive through the dense fog of, uh, of pain, mm. you know, what is a bereavement, how, how you grow out of it, what is your smile, what is actually surrender means, what is a sin and what is not, and, and, and helping us to, you know, take our canoe to the other side, into the light, uh, but sadly, um, that that protocol and process has been shut down by humans for one reason or another. So for me, Michael, I think solution is that an individual, the Michael on his ground and Surinder on his ground, needs to sit down and go into contemplation. What's in it for me when I go in conversation with my mind and soul and my Creator? What's in it for me? Do I want to or not? I think that that contemplation is very, very, very important before that we become a meditation, before we have a focus. Uh, and remember, if we don't have a focus, it's just an accident. Um, I, I know that one of the first stories that I ever heard about Guru Nanak uh, was he was invited, and correct me if I'm getting the story wrong, um, but he was invited to a mosque to pray. And they said, do you want to pray with us? And Nanak says, yes. You, and, uh, and so he stands there while the others are praying. And he says, why didn't you pray with us? And he says, well, you weren't praying either. That this person was thinking about a horse. This person was thinking about, you know, that their mind was not on God. And, you know, there's a little bit of chastising that your mind should have been on God. And, and Nanak's, uh, you are right completely. Like, so Nanak's point always has been that, Michael, that when you are in a church, then you should be in a church complete. I mean, complete physically, mentally, and soul-wise. You should be there, mm. present in the moment, not living in a past and not living in a future. And, and then through the conversation, develop that relationship, you know? Um, how many times our mother... Um, shouted at, at us, are you listening? Yes. Are you, where is your focus? So exactly same way, the Nanak says, we're not listening. Our focus is distorted, you know, dis mm -hmm. distorted. And, and we are thinking about, <clears throat> oh, I parked my car under that, you know, in the street. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hopefully I won't get a ticket, although right. we have, you know, we're doing the prayer. So Nanak want us to be 
in love with mind so that mind can develop that that focus and we can become the meditation mm -hmm. he does not believe the closing your eyes is a meditation he doesn't believe that running away to jungle and you know putting your physical body through a a, a difficult process uh, or doing diets is going to do anything he doesn't believe in none of those things he believes uh, investing into happiness and living a life in a natural way. Natural way means the however we've been created by the creator in that time span, you know, and, and not getting this uh, pain, suffering, and the joy. These are uh, temporarily, momentarily things. They're going to disappear. And not getting these things, these challenges, break our relationship with ourselves and our creator so my teacher my spiritual guide used to say michael one cannot converse with the mind how can it converse with the soul then if one cannot converse with the soul or hear listen and express and go in conversation with the soul how can it converse with the creator and nowadays is a consumer's mindset isn't it michael that we want God to communicate with us, right. God to give us a sign, you know, <laughs> and, and we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and that reminds me of something that I, there, there's so much of what you said that has absolutely stuck with me throughout the years, you know, because uh, like I said, at the onset, we've, I, I, I think we've known each other for about 10 years. Um, yeah. yeah, it feels and, like lifetime. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it does. Yeah, and and but, the life before that, Michael. Look where probably. you were born and where you got raised, and yeah, well, you know your practices and how we. Yeah, it's a sangat, what we say, congregation or mass. Mm -hmm. You know, when when Creator put us together mm -hmm. so that we can uh, get inspired and we thrive in life, it's it's the uh, the blessing of the Creator and. Right. Uh, I think we met even life before. This. I, so I, I this is how I. Feel. You know, I my my music. Uh, you know, I I have my one of my Dilrubas, um just hanging on the wall over here, and uh, you know, and so much of the music that I play and that I love, and you know, really I can. I I I've had a few Indian music teachers, but it really was your tutelage that got me yeah and, and no and i'm so grateful you know for for the time that i got to spend with you um because uh it has been such a joy and a refuge in my life to be able to have that music much of which you know i learned from you but i remember you, yeah well thank you I, I remember we were sitting down in Detroit uh, because you were you were hosting the uh, the the uh, music retreat. Yeah, yeah and um, and I I was married at that time, and you said, you know, Michael, do you ever fight with your wife? You know, and I was joking. I was like, oh no, never. You know, but it, it, you know, um, obviously, you, you know, husbands and wives will argue. It's just built into the relationship, and you said. Your relationship, you know, and, and again, I'm paraphrasing, but you have to view your relationship with God in much the same way that if you've never argued with God, you don't really have a relationship with God, <laughs> right? If it's and, not real, you know, then it's a fake. Right. And uh, my teacher told me one thing I remember, but it, that's the first thing, that if you want to make it, don't fake it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah, so it has to be real. Like with your wife, you had a relationship, and mm -hmm. a similar way with the God, you know. Yeah. So yeah. why yeah. why is that, why this has to be different? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say that because chaos is something that I've become very well accustomed to um, over the last the last couple years of my life, and there have been times where my belief or my faith has been terribly challenged, but at the same time. I've, I've almost found a, a renewed relationship with God. Uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's a very strange thing unless you go through uh, a period of severe grief. Um, it's hard to explain. 
but it seems like people who I, I uh, am a community am in a community with people who uh, have lost their spouses, you know, or lost children lost, you know, that, that they know what grief is like um, in a very profound way. So let's say somebody comes to you for advice and they say, you know, um, Professor Singh, you know, I am, I, I, I feel like I have no control in my life. I want a relationship with God. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. But all of this turmoil has, it, it's, it's crammed me into, into, you know, terrible habits. I'm not sleeping well. I'm not, you know, I'm not healthy. I'm, I'm just, and I don't know where to start. See, Michael, 3,000 people I have here uh, in, in the school that I'm, I'm dealing with, they all came with the same question. Okay, you know? okay. Nobody, okay. Can, nobody came in to me uh, saying, <laughs> hey, Surinder Singh, this is a very special thing I found and I want to share this with you. They, they all had like a chronic illness or mental issues or, or relationship issues. And of course, looking for that bigger connection with the creator. Um, I, I must share, I, I must go back a little bit for you to, to understand this, that how simple, but yet how complicated this thing is. You mentioned the instrument Dilruba, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we met through Dilruba and, uh, you know, we worked together. There's the, the sound, this coin of sound have a two sides, the entertainment and inner attainment. When there was a nothing, there was a word, right? That's the Bible. Yep. So the sound was the very first thing the creator created to, to create this universe. But that sound, from that sound, Michael, we created music. Mm -hmm. The music, and then we labeled it a healing. This music is a healing. Then the whole world should be healed by now. Look how many hundreds and thousands of the, the music uh, albums are released every single day. Music isn't healing. It's not. I learned this, that music can have a possibility if you have learned it. It can make you holy or it can make holes in you. Oh, you know, nothing okay. will stay in your life. Okay. So in either way, you will be holy. The holes of psyche, which is a spiritual depression, materialistically, um, a simple thing, what we call a vacuum in a life with that you done a gig. And then that evening, you know, there is a party and next day you don't want to leave your room. There is a vacuum and we, we can't handle that. And therefore, um, attachment, this driver will push us into drugs mm -hmm. and it will destroy whatever the, the, the talent we were given and the music we built. So the, the sound have entertainment and entertainment you know if you want to be busy and want to be socialist you go to church because you want to do things in a community that's fine but now your purpose is not spiritual you are still in entertainment world you're not in attainment you you don't want to uh, play a music celestial a something which can resonate with your soul and mind so the, the Nanak's music, like this, the, our, my faith or my path is all based on sound, nothing else, the sound. Now, the sound is a physical thing. I mean, for us, we, we hear, we listen, uh, we speak, we sing, we express. But what makes us express this is our emotions. You know, you're creating sound, da, and when you're angry, da, same sound. Or when you are sad, da, same sound, but your sound is propelled through emotions. So in the world of yoga, or yogic sound, the emotional property for us to diagnose our emotional state and feel that and create the sound called nad. Mm -hmm. And from that sound we construct the mood so we can understand the state of mind we are in so once we diagnose that now we know where we are do we want to be here so when people come in in um, uh, grief mm -hmm. 
and they don't know you know of course they, if they knew they won't be asking that question to me right. Right. so the, the ancient india developed these programs michael uh, those where you you first diagnose your your grief may be uh, your dealing process with the grief with your loss will may be different from from your you know anybody next to you mm -hmm. so so it has to be individualized only you can do this only you only you can bring yourself out of this fog so i say this to my students i can prepare you prepare you for to be the best driver mm -hmm. remember i'm only navigator i can't drive for you i care about you but i ain't gonna carry you yeah. so I can tell you what is the right way of abbreviment. Why, you know, to, to, to look for uh, what is your counseling to you? Mm -hmm. You know, when you are in addiction, you know, what, what is happening? Let me help you to understand, you know, how to diagnose yourself through the sound. So, it is okay when uh, we are crying, our sister, brother, mother, friends will come and because they can hear us. But do we hear the cry of our mind or we try to express it? And that's where the problem is. All of these, these spiritual issues we have. I, uh, majority of these people, Michael, you will be shocked. They are not suffering from physical depression or anxiety. But there is not even a mental issue. They're, they're suffering from spiritual depression, which is the most difficult thing. Mm. Okay? So enabling them to be able to compose their self. Yeah. You know, the, the, the tool is the sound. Mm -hmm. So configuring the moods and to be able to sense the, and understand how to feel what is the emotional side and how does this carry between the world of time and the expression so that music michael um is is a non path mm -hmm. and i went through my my grief uh, when i lost my own body mm -hmm. to um, due to situations um when i died but I also lived, mm. you know, I, I lost who I was 19 years of life, like went mm. from my hands like this. So here, neither mother, brother, sister, father or, or friends were able to do anything. Mm. It is a simple that mm. your if your head is hurting, Michael, is your head is hurting. Yeah, you've got to do something. It's not that your friend as a, as a friend i take the medicine and you will feel better right. no you got to do something and none of helps this faith yeah. i am or, or path i am walking on through the sound configuration this composition he makes you master mm -hmm. of of your life so you can avoid the disaster from life mm -hmm. yeah um gosh that's so good yeah is it okay to can can we talk a little bit about your personal journey because it is so inspiring? You know. <laughs> well, uh, um, my books will be coming out also, Michael. I let you know, you let your your viewers know also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, I didn't, uh, didn't know that. Yeah, there are two books. Um, uh, one is uh, called Preparing to Be. Uh, hopefully, the, my publisher will keep the same thing where mm -hmm. I put my. It's, it's a personal narrative. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, Michael, I, I was in La La Land, you know what I mean? When I couldn't see my own feet, I was flying. I was in an illusion. Everything I needed was there. Parents were okay, well to do. And Indian upbringing is very different. I was in India at that time, mm -hmm. a very different upbringing. And so uh, you can say born with a golden spoon in a mouth. You know, so mm -hmm. before we thought things were there uh, and dreams were bigger and we were told to dream big and aim higher. So my dreams were to fly for the, the country's air force. Okay. 
and <clears throat> age of 19 back in 1989 i had a mishap uh, i was kidnapped and tortured uh, tortured for a very little money from the my my parents and which they refused they said my, my father is a very like in between the lines you know he's, he's a military man so um, he says look life and death is not in your hand so let's see right. and i was raised that way too i mean uh, with that belief that look when is your time that nobody can stop it you know it's going to happen but when it's not your time nobody can do anything mm -hmm. And, and the, this process, I was 28 days in this uh, torture chamber where um, I had a spinal injury at the end, uh, got electrocuted in spine two times, back to back. And uh, when that happened, I went unconscious in coma for uh, approximately four months. And where doctors were saying, um, you know, it will be it will be kind thing to do to switch off the life support, but they didn't do that either. Mm. Um, so now um, I I can hear things, you know. Few people. There is one doctor, uh, Doctor Das, his name is. I can hear him every single time he asks my mother to switch off the machine. I I I can recall. And I can also listen to my grandmother. Mm. And she's, she's talking to me again and again, this repeating this intense from Nanak's writing. Suniye, duk apka nas, mean listening, listen, oh my dear mind. Through this listening, you can cut through this pain. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, hey, I'm hearing you, grandmother. I, but how do I do this? So... Then one day just clicked that I'm hearing, but I'm not listening. Mm -hmm. I got to listen to something else. So I went in conversation with my mind, Michael. I said, look, you know, what happened, neither you wanted, neither I wanted that. You know, neither soul wanted. If it was supposed to be happening, now we have option, two options, either quit, either get up. So... Oh, my dear friend, my mind, what do you want to do? So I started forming a relationship with my mind. And there was a lot of conversation, a lot of conversation. That conversation, which I was feeling, you know, the listening. It was not hearing because the words were not coming out. I wasn't able to see or hear or speak or move any part of my body. So I moved my left leg. I, I moved a toe of the left foot. And the doctor couldn't, uh, said, uh, this, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. How come is this happening? So from there, the day after, I was just sitting on the bed and he said, no, 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 no way. He said, it's it, like, you know, you don't, have, you have two missing parts in the spine on, on left side. This is not possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, I don't know. I, I haven't done anything. My mind became my best friend. So I started calling a soulmate. Mm. Since that day, Michael, I have not been to doctor. Oh, wow. I've been living a happy and healthy life. I've just turned 51 mm -hmm. now. So I had amazing, amazing, amazing mm -hmm. life after 1989. I did learn this art before, but Again, you know, it was a more entertainment side, you know, music, yeah, 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 yoga, yoga, this, yoga, that. Oh, well, yes, you know, it's good to hear, but and didn't put it to use. Mm -hmm. So this accident made me put this amazing program into use. And then I thought, okay, well, I will do why I've given this life for, mind, soul, and body decided, I don't want to lose this, mm -hmm. what I have. So whatever is not shared, Michael, is lost. Yeah. So I wanted to share. So I dedicated my life to sharing. And, and 
mind said, you know, let's, let's tell this to our God, take care of everything. There's nothing that I don't have. I still fly, I go swimming, I do horse riding, mm-hmm. I do cycling, I go long walks. I, I am the healthiest person physically, mentally, and I, I would like to say spiritually too, uh, thanks to my mind. Mm-hmm. And this program was given by Nanak or built by Nanak. Um, again, the day I installed the trust, Michael, I, I turned the program, movement of my toe brought the belief to me. And that's how I found my faith. I was not sick by chance. Mm. I became sick by choice. That, yeah, and that's beautiful. It, is there any part of you that believes that maybe that, that movement of your toe was God saying, you can do, you know, like, I'll give you a little bit to prove that this is possible. And then you take over the I, rest. I, mm, I believe, uh, Michael, the God says, I give you the all. Okay. To everybody, to everything. God doesn't give you in a portion. It gives you all. But are we able to handle that all? Are we capable to drive that all or not? It is not. Uh, ability of creator is our disability you know to not to see what we've been you know given mm. we have been given everything but what do we do we make complaint we need good car we go to church and pray we, we you know we we need this we church and pray we only remember god when tear appears or or something happens in our heart only we only remember god yeah. at that time yeah. And then we we say, you know, uh, God, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm coming here so that you are happy. When you go there with your you know baggage of sadness, who gave you life? How how can we expect for Creator to be happy? Because we are a failure. He gave us the joy. He gave us the smile. It's it's us who are not abling that. You know. Our disaster is because we refuse to be on the seat of the masters. Mm. Look, Michael, we can drag it like this for our life for 10 years, 20, 30, 50, 100, 150, you can live or whatever, I don't know. Uh, But what is the point being sad and not living, you know, not living? It's, it's, It's your choice. It's not mine or societies, God gave you opportunity. What you make out of it is in your hand. So you are actually truly, you are the master. Mm. So make sure life becomes a carnival. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and especially, you know, that's especially wise seeing what's going on in America and a little bit in the UK, from what I understand about, this new victimization that's happening. It's uh, th- this idea that if I'm born this particular race, I can't achieve, or if I'm born in this particular class of income, I can't achieve or, mm. or be happy because society is against me. Um, then to see blame game is yeah. you're never going to become a hero. Right. <laughs> um, I say this to my daughters, and we had a convers- this conversation. This is my personal view. Mm-hmm. I'm not being insensitive in any way to anything. I think there is, a, if there is a good things happening, there's also bad things happening. There is privileged and not privileged. There are uh, easy way out the community is taking. I'm not saying the system does not have a corruption at all, not. But absolutely. This blame game is going to make us weaker and weaker and weaker. I say this to my daughters that Obama, you know, the last president of America, I mean, you know, and they they were reading uh, Michelle Obama's book. I said, look, you know, it's not about, you know, what is the fun, Michael, if you have everything and then you make it. The fun is when you have nothing, you know. Abraham Lincoln, we, I remember uh, one of the chapter that he used to sit under the street lamp 
that was his privilege. Okay. And look, the privilege he gave to the country. So mm -hmm. victimization is for the weak people. Okay. If you want to be the hero, you shouldn't be thinking about these things. You are the change. Be the change. Right. Make the change. If you're not master, then you're a slave. Mm -hmm. End of story. Yep. Regardless what religion, mm -hmm. what privilege, what color you have. Mm -hmm. If you are not master, then you are slave. Mm -hmm. Slave to yourself, slave to your fears, slave to your money and poverty, slave to your status, mm -hmm. you know, even slave to your soul. And when you become slave to your soul, that spiritual slavery, oh my God, Michael, it, it is horrible. That is what hell is. So, um, yeah. so, so victimization, uh, privilege, I, I know a lot of people, uh, Michael, who are born, brought up here in uh, their skin color is not, uh, you know, uh, like mine. Uh, but they, they, they had the same opportunity. You know, I work alongside them. I, I'm not saying there are not, there are not issues, but I don't think anybody is between what I want to achieve for myself. You know, it may be a little bit hard one day or easier the other, but if I'm determined, if I want it, I'll get it. So we, we are humans and we should think like humans. But when we divide ourselves into classes and colors and religion and races, then we're not even human. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then uh, it's a clan of buffalo and this is, uh, you know, mammals. These are birds. Then, right. then it's a divided. Then it's not life. Uh, that, that actually brings me back to music, though, in a way, because... I was, uh, it, it was again in Detroit, um, and I was playing uh, and singing for uh, Sarjit Singh, who, you know, gosh, uh, and, and, you know, for anybody watching, he's, he's a, a, a master Sarangi player, just really unbelievably, um, just a virtuoso. <laughs> by, and, you know, I, I, I can't say, and, and, and what a sweet man. But one of the things he said to me was that, look, you know, Dilaruba accompanies you you don't accompany Dilruba, yes. you know and yeah and because it, i was singing and my singing was was so dependent on the tone of the instrument in order to get the pitch <laughs> right you know and he caught that right away he was like no 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 <laughs> no you your your voice in, in very first day michael sorry yeah. to interrupt no you. very okay. first day in the world of sound in the in the yogic side of the no entertainment Mm -hmm. yogic side of uh, inner attainment side or spiritual side of the sound is uh, we with the very first lesson or very first sentence is given to us mm -hmm. our instrument is a shadow of our voice mm. yep not yeah. that it's other way yeah. around if it goes other way around you will be dependent then you know right. remember yeah yeah and that you, know, is... you play the music yes and that is, that is a type of slavery, right? That if you are dependent on the instrument to feed you the note, you know, then you're but not... How do we come out of it, Michael? How, yeah. how do we prepare ourselves, you know? This is why we yeah. need a proper teachers, right? That's true. How do we free ourselves so that you become the creator of music and then you play what cannot be played yeah. and you hear what's not played Mm -hmm. And, you know, how does then, then your instrument, violin, or clarinet, saxophone, or piano, or dilruba, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it dances yep. on your thought pattern. Yeah. So, it, so how do we get to that point, you know? That ability, those programs, like ancient India, developed it. Um, but again, we, we, we said no, especially I would like to say thank you to my countrymen here from, from England going to India um, in, in ruling there for 200 years and uh, destroying that educational system. Yeah. Uh, sad, yeah. but you know, you guys were lucky to send them back from Boston mm -hmm. 
uh, but um, July the 4th, right? Yep. For you guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's uh, but true. I don't know yeah. how much you guys lost, but uh, the world lost one beautiful thing. And that was a, an, another educational system where life was at front as a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, you were not learning to be a survivor. Mm -hmm. You were learning to be an amazing. Yeah. So, so that we lost that because of uh, the British occupation. The, but it is what it is. So it's no point. It's no time for us to be blaming anybody. It's a time to do something. So you and me are in conversation. Uh, you know, that means something is happening. Congratulations. Yeah. Amazing. Times are changing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, you know, you, you asked like, well, you know, how, I, I think maybe you asked rhetorically a little bit, but you know, how do you free yourself from that, like from that dependency? Right. Um, and that sparked in my mind. I thought, well, I guess, you know, cause I was thinking you got to practice, you know, you got to like put in hours and hours of practice and just like really listen and really concentrate and really, but then I thought, wait a minute. No, the first step for me was I had to believe that I could do it. I had to believe that I could learn. See, yeah. that comes from trust. Right. But first you got to trust and the trust will not happen without the question. You're, there's no quest if there is no question. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, Michael, uh, while we are talking about this, the freedom thing, mm -hmm. and, and let's, let's use musical world as a program. Mm -hmm. Unless the purpose is clear, right? There is no process. The process have its own purpose. Like Nanak's way of transforming the whole entire India single-handedly with music. And his program was based on natural discipline. In the world of entertainment, we have a discipline that, you know, we have to do this, 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 you know, these are the runs ascending and descending and we do these scales and we, you know, practice to perfection. Mm -hmm. But in the yogic world, it's completely the other way. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? I spent five years with my teacher, day and night. You know, every single morning I will go wake him up 3 a.m. And never I came back in those five years uh, back home by, you know, I think later than 9 p.m. Every single day, seven days a week, five years. And I was not allowed to make a single note. We didn't have recording devices. We didn't have yeah. anything. I was not allowed to be with alongside him even with a pen and paper, can you imagine? Yeah. He said, you got to live this, my dear. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be a musician, then, you know, then it's a different story. But let me help you to, so that, you know, it's not that you are playing music, the music is playing you. So that tuning has to happen. So I go back to these two words, Michael. If you fall into the trap of man-made discipline, then you know, it's a worldly thing. But if you go into nature's discipline, natural way, what is it, you know, what is your, what is Michael's natural ability? And it's the teacher, what the teacher looks in and enables and say, okay, for example, for me, Michael, giving you a program and saying, usually what I say three times. And that's like never going to, take even you know maximum one exercise will take a nine minutes and people do freak out i'm sorry to use this word but they said you know nine minutes and you're talking about music and i want to be performer i want to go do research in the university and you're yeah. not letting me spend this much time remember we are talking about emotions expression we must understand the attention span of our mind Mm -hmm. So, if we are in a natural way, we can diagnose to practice and understand. Practice in the church, practice in the kitchen, practice in the, mm -hmm. in the family life, or practice in, for the concert. 
if purpose is clear, protocol will be there, right there. The problem is with the purpose. I get so many dozen people coming in because they want to have a better economical life, see? So they, they come in to learn about the business of music. Mm. So their purpose is making money. And that's a different world altogether, you know? Then they should go to economic school and marketing and management and all of those things. But when it comes to music, from church choir to azan, from bhajans to the kirtan from mantra all of these things michael is a different world mm. it's a different world and it's an amazing world and i hope our brothers and sisters can can pay some attention to to this this amazing amazing thing that god have given us is our throat mm. and the ears and if we can configure you can play anything anything yeah. Yeah. And that was definitely something you taught me, you know, that the ear training and the singing, you know, if I'm speaking practically, um, I, I, I went to like an electric slide guitar, you know, and found that I could, I could play, I could play rather well because I knew what to listen for, you know, and I knew the process of tuning you, you know, it's, like, it's, it's just so amazing once your ears and your throat opens up, you know, what you can do with it. And not just musically, but also the way that you listen to conversations, the way that you listen to somebody when they're talking to you and you can Indeed. digest. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you can't hear the emotional state in the conversation, Michael, the, the, your music is going to be zombie. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. A lot of electronic but, music. That's where it fails. Is... See, like for, for me, any sound, audible sound, mm -hmm. uh, Michael, it's, it's not about electronic or wind or whatever. Like if we go uh, even click our finger, you know, mm -hmm. I can click it with anger. Or yeah. I can okay. click it with the love. OK. So it is your emotional tuning. That will uh, guide your projection. You know, you will probably hear this again and again in Indian music schools that you only play what's you, what you are inside. Right. So even you are on electronic music, um, uh, you know, on electric guitars and all of these things, it's not that you can, you made those tools. It's mm -hmm. not that, you know, creator created a very different process and that process was your ears and your throat, your logical and creative brain. This is a five point combination. Once you combine it, you can make anything happen. <laughs> you know, we are, we are talking like, see, yep. we conversing. Yep. We can feel each other's uh, emotional state to somewhat through this machine made by Th that's a good point. human. Yep. That is a good point. So, yeah. So why our music is dependent on our skills uh, of just playing an instrument? I think uh, the, the internal tuning, and that's why society is suffering so much. Yeah. We, are, we emotionally insensitive beings now. So if we can somehow invest, Mike, a little bit into uh, emotional agility, mm -hmm feelings and moods that's what the six are you know the very first pipeline for for them to seek the oneness right. the lesson of oneness the seekers are michael going through the first emotions then they feel the sound listen to that sound and then they they live that sound through the rag or mood and uh, the conversation how mind uh, then react to those things is a simple yeah. you know if my mind says i want to have a chocolate <laughs> and uh, my soul says to mine shut up you know you're going to be on a fast right. the outcome is not going to be great mm -hmm. so nanak's way was amazing he said communicate communicate in a way so there is no tug and draw mm. it's a harmony mm. so compose the melody inside you right. 
and that transformed my life. That's yeah, that yeah, that's that that may be as succinct as I've ever heard it. That's <laughs> Well, you know, uh, we've been talking for about an hour and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I certainly would love for, I, I assume you're going to let everybody in your Facebook friends know when, when your book comes out and all of that stuff. Right? I, I will send you a, an email also. I hope you're receiving my mails, uh, but Facebook and uh, Instagram, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully I can come in to um, your land also on the book tour, probably the, the bookstores nearby and we can meet in person. There are two books. One is based on the secrets oh, okay. of the okay. sound, you know, the, like the, that forbidden art mm -hmm. uh, that was not talked about that, how, which sound, which emotion and why and how to use it. So working on, uh, Emotional agility through the sound of one book is a kind of manuscript, uh, especially to to deal for us humanity to heal through the sound. But the the, the first book which you will have in your hand soon, um, that is about a little bit of my journey. Great. Maybe you can resonate through yeah. that and uh, we can have a conversation on the platform of sound and, and, and the, you know, that's the whole purpose that there's no need if I can do it, mm -hmm. anybody can do it. I never thought I'll be able to use sound in this way. So Michael, if I believe, I feel that it's possible for me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, problem is which many of your listeners will resonate with this too problem was not surviving that for me in 1989 i just didn't die and i lost my my lower body and i lost my sight and my uh, um, hearing my sense of touch smell speech hmm. um, then i recovered from it you know the physical gain i know one day I'm going to disappear again. So the temporarily given life was, I wasn't happy with it. That wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And the problem didn't finish there, Michael. Problem was PTSD. Yeah. Can you imagine every single day when I'm just at the front of the mirror, I'm changing my shirt, all of these scars, what do they remind every single time I, um, I see myself or, uh, there is a little bit hiccup uh, due to my physical condition. It reminds me PTSD. That is a monster. Yeah. And sound helped me. You know, path of sound, spirituality, this freedom I, I, I came across through the sound helped me to live my life the best way. Yeah. So I started dealing for me to have a healing. So it was amazing. So PTSD is the issue. You lost your loved one. Of course, you, you can resonate how difficult it is. Yeah. But remember, every day is going. So you've yeah. got to understand how to deal. We are all together. We are here with you. I can share things with you. Yeah. Dealing is a healing, my dear. I mean, uh, you know, ignoring and putting it under the rug is just going to grow, multiply, and it comes back like a boomerang. Yep. And yeah. so, you know, it, it's easy mm -hmm. if we can, you know, put it to some perspective. Closure or no closure, that, that's irrelevant. Right. I don't have a closure with, since, since I had all of this, I, I, it was 11 friends circle. Out of those 11, we are only two alive, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm those nine, you know, they died in that time period. They were picked up back to back. So um, it's not one thing. It, it's, there are so many things. Whenever I receive a call from Germany, the other guy lives in Germany, is everything's become so fresh. But how do we deal with this? Are we going to carry on suffering or we need to thrive? Mm -hmm. So that again takes me back to your question of victimization yeah and i'm no victim no 
No. You know, so I, I, I just, whatever day I have, I want to have the best of it. So yeah. simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, you may be one of the strongest people I think I've ever met, you know, so that's, uh, but you and, are too, Michael, oh, you know, oh. you're destined for a warrior creator created you and gave you all the gifts. You just need to turn the keys on. I'm working on it every day. <laughs> so, well, um, just call me if I can be any assistance, any help. Oh. I'm always, I'm beside you. You are, you are so gracious. You know, that when I asked you to do this talk, you said, tell me the time I'll be there, you know? And, uh, and, and I know that you're not, you don't get a lot of free time. So, uh, <laughs> it, yeah. it's okay. I think yeah. I, I knew it's going to be a meaning, meaningful conversation. Yeah. Also, I didn't get to speak to you um, for a couple of years now. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to see you talk to you. And uh, because uh, our conversation is not complete yet, right. I, 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 I felt, Michael, that there's a lot more mm -hmm. that we need to sit together and do a well, lot, lot, lot more. Well, let's, let's do that soon then. Indeed. <laughs> well, you know, God bless you. And uh, man, it was good to talk to you. And uh, let's do it again real soon. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Michael. Bye.